And now it's time for the man who is known to millions as my uncle, the rustic star of the Red Green Show. Oh, that was a big hit there, that one. And a heck of a human being, considering all he's been through in his life. You know, just a car accident so long. Anyway, he's, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, old people and Siamese twins. Yeah, I think I pretty much got everybody there. Please welcome Red Green. Thank you very much, Harold, and uh, thank you for tuning us in. We got a heck of a show for you this week. Uh, well, actually, it's probably within 5 or 10% of last week's show, but we certainly appreciate your patience. <laughs> we had a, a heck of a set to up at the lodge uh, this week. You going to interrupt me? Sorry? Sorry, Uncle Red? I was, I was just making mental crossword puzzles. <laughs> what, what's the, what's the three-letter word for shoehorn? And he, and he usually interrupts me. Okay, anyhow, uh, the water pump broke down at the lodge, and uh, none of us wanted to go under the lodge and, and fix it. So uh, Stinky Peterson got the idea we should uh, we should build a water tower, you know, and uh, not just a water tower on the roof, but maybe up into the trees on the ridge, so we can you know really get a lot of uh, a lot of power and juice and a lot of torque and pull down. The, and come on over here a minute, Harold. I'm sorry, but uh, Harold. Uh, he usually interrupts my stories and, and throws me right off, and, and he's got this machine here, and he does like that kind of thing, and takes us into the next segment, and then just, it really throws me off. Well, not today, <laughs> Uncle Red. Today, I'm just your director and your nephew. I promise I'm not gonna interrupt you, I'm not gonna bother you, I'm not gonna break the flow from any part of you, I'm not gonna bring up film clips, nothing. <laughs> just stand here quietly. Only if things get really, really boring would I ever touch these buttons. All right, Gerald, I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> Late in the evening when the fire is almost out, the boys start comparing and you know what that's about. Who's bigger and who's stronger and on and on it goes. Till the biggest test of all, who has the oldest clothes? Who has the oldest clothes? Who has the oldest clothes? Can't tell with your eyes, you can always use your nose. <laughs> Stinky has a pair of socks older than his son. Buster has a vest he says he got from the grave of Matilda Hun. <laughs> When people see our wardrobe, they often wonder why. It's not that we like old clothes so much, it's just that we prefer wearing things that our wives didn't buy. <laughs> this week on uh, Handyman Corner, I'm uh, gonna show you something that you can do with your old car. You know, I mean, this is an old car, but uh, there's still something about it that gets my heart pounding. Uh, I think it's the lack of brakes. <laughs> you know, uh, we all gotta go sometime, and, and frankly, I'd rather I'd rather go with a, some kind of a head-on into the guardrail rather than spend my declining years in a retirement home or something. Or, I don't know how I got off on that. You know, that's the trouble when I get started, and then I go off on a crazy analogy. And, and that's the way I am with the car, too. I, I, I got the car, and I just can't leave well enough alone with it. And I, what I wanted to do today was uh, I wanted to turn this door and the other door into, a, into the gull wing. You know, the gull wing door type of style, which they had on the old Mercedes, I believe, and uh, Brooklyn had the gull wing. And I think, I believe gulls have them. Not sure on that one. Anyway, the first thing you gotta do is uh, you gotta remove the door, which is not as easy as it sounds. Uh, all right. Well, what I what I've done here is I've uh, poked a little hole in the in the, in the roof, but uh, I'm gonna need that for later. So that's a, that's actually a time saver. Okay. <laughs> By golly, this is really on, on there. <laughs> uh, there is a better way. <laughs> okay, where there's a van, there's a way. <laughs> now, all I gotta do is get this unit up here. Put her on here. Now, what I <laughs> what I have to do is create a hinge now uh, through our through our pre-drilled hole, and I'm going to use the handyman secret weapon, duct tape. <laughs> Put on uh, two or three layers of duct tape on this. Uh, 
just so you're street legal. You know, you don't want the cops over. And uh, you want to secure there, because there's nothing more inconvenient than having to pull off the highway and go back and get your door. <laughs> anyway, I think that's uh, pretty secure there. We got enough tape for the other door, so uh, now I'm going to go and hook up the mechanism that will actually uh, open the gullwing door. Getting exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Now, there you have it. If that doesn't scream Italian, uh, then uh, you're not listening. Uh, what I done was uh, I got a garage do door opener there. I got it from my neighbor's place while they were out. And uh, I ran the chain from the door opener. It's, it's mounted on the, on the seat. And I ran the chain up through and uh, hook her onto the door. And the duct tape here, I'll just hold her. And, and, and then and I got a, uh, the wireless remote for the garage door opener. And I walk up to my car, and I just feel like Marcello Master, Master, it's like, uh, you know. Uh, so anyway, until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Let's give our gullwing uh, door a shot. with uh, more features and more from our regular guests. And will you hear the ending of the water tower story? Well, we may not have time. Well, I'm the director. You'll find time. <laughs> The squirrel is fat for the coming winter. The bears are plump as they ready for hibernation. The muskrat, the porcupine, the raccoon are roly-poly to see them through their long winter sleep. What's your excuse? <laughs> so uh, anyway, we were getting into this building this water tower thing, and uh, we didn't want to make it out of wood or metal. We thought we'd just get a gigantic plastic bag and uh, <laughs> string it between some of the trees, and then it would funnel the water down to the lodge. Uh, of course, the problem is, where are you going to find a plastic bag uh, 90 feet by 90 feet that will hold 15 tons of water without ripping? <laughs> now, luckily, Moose Thompson had one in his van. <laughs> You're going to interrupt me, aren't you? No. I want the people to hear this story, Uncle Rhett. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I really do. Honest engines. Stamp on it. Cherry on top. Superman says so. On a stack of Bibles. <laughs> You think the story is stupid. You think what we did was stupid. That's true. Well, then why do you want me to tell the story? Well, well, uh, to be honest with you, I've been getting a lot of, of negative feedback from our viewers. Well, okay, mostly from men from around here, but they always say, how come, how come you always interrupt Rad's stories when he's telling the story? How come you do that? And I'll say, well, uh, because, that's why. And they say, well, let him finish one one time, see if it's good. I figure, oh, okay, you'll finish one of your stories, and then people will know why I interrupt you. <laughs> so you go ahead, you go ahead, you tell one of your stories about what you and your friends did. Go ahead, right in there, tell them. <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't throw it. Uh... I didn't even see it. It was still rolling. What are you talking about? Raccoons. All over the place. Uh, what can I do for you, Red? Uh, you, oh, you want to play through? Is that it? No, no, no. Uh, uh, Bob, I, I, uh, I cut down a tree uh, at the lodge, oh, and yeah. uh, Harold says the government's going to, you know, audit me or rip out my fingernails or, or send me to prison or something. Mm. And I thought, well, since you're with the natural resources people and, and you're a lodge member, maybe you could kind of straighten things out for me. Oh, that's okay. Sure, Red, I'll okay. do that. Great. Great. Except I'm working right now. Oh. Yeah, this is government work, huh? Really? Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm marking trees. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, 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 you see that tree over there? See the little mark on there? See that? Oh, yeah. 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 I did that. Oh. Well, that takes a lot of time and concentration. Yeah. I find uh, golf helps me with that. Oh. Yeah. Well, now, the tree I cut, it was, it was a beach tree, Bob, and, mm -hmm. it was, I, and I swear it was no more than six inches in diameter, mm -hmm. and it come down real easy, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Oh. No, you know, the government, they're not too concerned with one tree. No. <laughs> it's not like you uh, flattened a whole forest. 
You didn't do that, did you? Flat hole for you? No, no. There you go. <laughs> See, that's the secret. Yeah. Moderation. All right. It's much like golf. Uh, oh, I, I play about oh, four or five rounds of golf a week. Really? Well, maybe, maybe about eight or nine <laughs> rounds of golf a week. Uh, but, you know, if I don't watch it, yeah. I could play as much golf as, as I wanted, and it could become a real problem. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or is it 10 or 12 rounds? Well, I don't know. I don't keep count. Four! Oh! Ten. Head down. Yeah. That's the whole thing, you know. Head down. This thing down. <laughs> it's all part of the game, you know. Right into the, right into the water there. Did you see that? Oh. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, Is that good? No, no, it's not good. Uh, well, it's good for the balls. I can wash them off, but uh, oh, it's head down. That's the whole thing, you know. Got to keep your head down. That's important. Got to do some government work. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. No, that's all right. Head Are down. Right? Are you all right, Bob? Hmm? You all oh, right? I'm fine. No problem. Head down. Seems a little bit upset there. I just... that's a... No, are you kidding? No. Head down. Bob. Head down. Bob. Head down. Head down. Flies in the sugar bowl two by two. What an unusual thing to do. Not the flies, but the two by two. You don't often see insects in formation. <laughs> Go Red, we got some fun letters today. This one's great. This is from a viewer. I think I think he's a real kidder, you know, more like a teaser. <laughs> Just read the letter, Harold, all right? I was born ready. <laughs> Dear Red, are there any explosives that can be made from a cake mix? This is for a surprise party, so please refer to me by the name Ralph rather than my real name, which is also Ralph, but spelt with an F. <laughs> Harold, uh, as the proctologist said to the jockey, we're getting into a sensitive area here. <laughs> I'm really kind of reluctant to uh, talk about explosives on the air, you know. No, Uncle Red, I don't think the viewer meant it that way. He just wants an explosive effect from his cake, you know? Something this, that you just won't have to stir nitroglycerin in with his recipe. Something like that. At least that's how I read it. Well, yeah, okay, Harold, but, you know, there are a lot of explosives that can be made with things you find right in your kitchen. Our kitchen? Or anybody's kitchen. No, like I mean, kitchen. Any, anybody's kitchen. Oh, yeah? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, mixing uh, the, the various baking goods in a certain proportion. Uh, I've seen a bran muffin take out a whole uh, septic system. <laughs> well, maybe we should answer this viewer by mail, because we don't want this information getting into the wrong hands. You know, like uh, a terrorist baker or something. Maybe what I should do is just uh, invite him up here and uh, get old man Sedgwick to show him. Uh, he makes a birthday cake that blows out its own candles. Oh, well, that's great. Would he charge the viewer for that? I wouldn't imagine it'd be too expensive or nothing. No. Might cost him a couple of eyebrows. That's not bad. <laughs> Beautiful day uh, up the lodge, and uh, Bill and I thought we'd uh, do a little fishing. Uh, oh, 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 Anyway, uh, Bill had got a new uh, one of these, uh, what they call a trolling motor. Uh, just a small little thing, uh, but you know, uh, they're kind of fun and they're, they're ideal for, for trolling, which is why they're called a trolling motor. And Bill didn't turn it on, show you how it worked. And by golly, you know, they have a lot of torque with them. They have a lot of power. Look out, look out, Bill. Look out, look out, look out, look out, look out, look out. Oh! Well, he, uh, yeah, he got lucky there. He's okay. So the first thing he wanted to do was uh, take off the, the outboard. You don't need that, because uh, believe it or not, that little, uh, that little trolling motor will do uh, almost the same job. So I just like, uh, that, that, that cover's loose. But, uh, <laughs> oh, well. That was a loose top of the motor anyhow. So uh, Bill the hooks are on there, and he told me to bring them uh, half a dozen or eight or nine uh, fishing poles, and then he, uh, he had these C-clamps. And he uh, starts sea clamping uh, fishing poles on the side of the boat, and he had some, not only duct tape, he had the black duct tape, which is the, the big dollar. Went the big dollar on this. And uh, he decided this is the best way to fish. You've got basically uh, 10, 11, 12, 10, quite a few rods uh, in the water. And now we're just going on the, on the trolling motor. And now, let's see this, you know what I'm saying? It's got the power to pull us along there. And beautiful day. Beautiful day. It's still a beautiful day. I haven't caught anything yet, but, uh, oh, I'm Bill. Wait, Bill, 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 you got one there. Bill, you got one. Got one, Bill. 
and it's starting to, you know, and this is the bad thing about having all the fishing on. And, and I had honestly hadn't noticed that he had. What I should have done probably there was uh, I probably should have turned off the uh, turned off the trolling motor or, or maybe unclipped the battery, but uh, it just didn't uh, didn't occur to me that the fish would be able to pull the bill quite that hard, you know. But, yeah! but it did. Anyway, uh, he was okay. All of a sudden, he started getting pulled. Couldn't figure out what was going on, and uh, then we realized uh, that all the fish hooks had got him. So I just got the prop out of the water, and that stopped the pull, and, and he was okay. So we got got over that uh, emergency, and then, you know, unfortunately, the, all the lines uh, wound around the prop and started to uh, yank it on, and, all, and it was, I thought he was going to, you know, really, so I tried to unhook, and he's got in the prop, and he's in his face, and, and, and worse, and, and, and all of a sudden, uh, then I got it off, and uh, he was fine, so I just had to cut the wire and let him go. <laughs> Beautiful day. <laughs> It is summer. Nine nutballs race up the lake on those noisy boats that look like snowmobiles. What do they call them? Seamobiles, water sleds, surf skis. What are they called? They need to know for the coroner's report. <laughs> You're kidding me, aren't you, Harold? Inflatable shoes? Yeah. They're called pumps. You, you, gotta, you pump them up. They're like, they're like sneakers or running shoes, you know? They're for people who like to play sports or, you know, just people who like to look like they play sports. You pump them up. They don't get real big or something, Uncle Red. They're not like air mattresses. They just ensure a proper, snug fit. Well, why don't you just buy the right size in the first place? I don't, I, I don't know. You could. Well, see, it's, you could do that, but where's the marketing scheme in that? You see? I mean, whereas with these, the pump. You see? That, it's just something new. It's just something new. That's all it is. And, you know, they cost twice as much as regular Twice shoes. as much? Oh, yeah. How come? Well, you know, inflation. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to come right back and uh, finish off the show with a lot of special stuff, so stay tuned. And stay tuned for the exciting conclusion of the water tower story. I forget it. I don't. <laughs> If any of you uh, have any teenagers uh, in the house, you might want to videotape this part so that uh, you can erase it later. <laughs> I'm going to talk about what they call uh, free love. Now, I'm not saying what's right and what's wrong, but uh, golly, you know, it's a, it's a bad thing. <laughs> so uh, all you teenage girls there in particular, uh, uh, whenever you get a request from a boy of the opposite sex uh, along the free love line, I'm asking you to just say no. Uh, that's, that's only fair to, to, to those of us from an older generation who grew up when things were real uptight and celibate and celibacy and so on, you weren't allowed to do anything. So we don't enjoy you being allowed to enjoy things that we weren't allowed to enjoy. It's just, it's not enjoyable. <laughs> so, I think just to say no in the interest of, for, of fair play. <laughs> you go, no, I'm, I, you know, I, can, I can't tell you what to do. All right, you do whatever you want to do, but I'll tell you one thing. Up at the lodge, our attitude towards free love is, <coughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> okay, it's just a game. It's just a game, right? Right? Is it a game? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Breathe deep. Breathe deep, Bob. Uh, Bob. Huh? Uh, so this, uh, the thing with the tree and the, huh? and the government. So I'm not going to be in any kind of trouble there with the with the tree thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, right. No. 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 You uh. You play golf, Red, or...? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed already. Oh, yeah, right. Well, you should try it. It's a great game. Yeah, well... Siri, great game. I don't know if I'd be... Yeah, just... Why don't you take a shot? No, 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 thank you. No, it's... Uh, no, no, no. No, no, it's easy. Go on, take oh, a shot. I gotta get back to the lodge, you know, and the, the guys are being... Take a shot. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. No problem. Just go ahead. Just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Now you're having fun. Huh? You having fun, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I'll show you. Good. Yeah, keep your head down. Four! <laughs> so, uh, I'm not in any trouble at all then, eh? So just, I'm not going to worry about it. I say Harold's blowing smoke and uh, everything's going to be just fine. Look at that. Would you look at that? Yeah. Oh, your head was down. That was the whole key. Okay. Uh, you know, 
Red, I would love to play a few rounds of golf with you. Well, golf's not really my game, you know, Bob. I don't think. Oh, it's not? I don't think so, no. Hmm. Dude, that's too bad. <laughs> so, tell me something, Red. How old was that tree that you cut down? Didn't have a mark on it, did it? It was a mark for cutting. You didn't get, uh, you didn't get approval to... Well, you know, uh, it's funny. You're just talking there, and uh, suddenly occurred to me, I think I could free up next Tuesday if you want to have a game of golf. Then. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, we tee off at 6.30 in the morning and 1 in the afternoon. 6.30 and 1. Mm -hmm. Two rounds. Oh, yeah. Well, well I, I'm going to go rest up. All right, and I'm, I'm going to get another club. I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> on Tuesday, you yeah, bet. Yeah. Don't worry, I've got lots of these clubs, lots of these Enough babies. For me and For both of us. <laughs> All right. All right, see you then. Okay. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> Four! Oh. Well, anyway, uh, that does, about does it for this uh, this week. So uh, if my wife is watching, I'm coming straight home tonight, and I'll warm my toes before I get into bed. <laughs> and as for the rest of you, thanks so much for watching. And on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang here at the lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Well, then, what about the water tower story? Finish the water tower story. Well, we don't have time for that this week, Harold. Oh, you folks should have seen it. It was great. They got this huge black giant plastic bag, right? And they put it up between two trees. You know what happened then? Oh, it started to rain. Just like it was poured for like two or three days, right? And the bag fills up. And then you know what? The trees started to bend like this. They were all hunched over worse than old man Sedgwick. <laughs> and that's, you know what happened then? Nothing. No water was coming out the bottom or nothing unless they had planned. You know why? They forgot to put a hose in it. Yeah, so Stinky Peterson, like he's the brains of the group, right? He gets this idea. He figures, hey, let's throw a wand dart at it. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know the word flood, this is what happened. We lost all the trees, four outbuildings, and three inches of topsoil. <laughs> See, Uncle Red, it was a good story. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>